All right, this morning we're going to discuss how to return, how to get the return values or value from a stored procedure. And so really quickly, if we're trying to get one value from a stored procedure, one of the things you'll see is several people will, or people will generally do like output or they'll do return in the stored procedure. Though return is, um, return only works, if I recall, with an int and output will work with anything. But we're going to do something different. We're going to declare a table. We're going to set it to 13, or we're going to give a column 13 to with a column name of value, declaring a C table. We're then going to insert into C. We're going to execute the stored procedure, and then we're going to select star from C. Now, again, this looks like overkill, but you'll see why in a second. I prefer to do it this way, and you'll see we get to return the value there. So again, why don't we just do output or why don't we do return if it's an int? Of course, in this case, it would be output. Um, and the reason is simple because suppose I want to get more than one value. Suppose that I'm going to return three values. So let's go to the stored procedure really fast. And um, and that's what we're, we're talking about is getting a result set back. It may be one or more values. And let's suppose it's going to be more than one. And yes, if it was just going to be one, output would work fine. Kind of my in clause here. Okay, update that. So we're going to return three values. And you will notice that other than getting rid of this parameter here, it still returns it fine. Okay. All right. So this will return, this will keep our results set uh, anywhere. In other words, it doesn't matter. There can be multiple values. Now, the table will have to match whatever is being returned from the stored procedure. So this works very well if you get into an environment and they have a certain process that occurs with the stored, or stored procedures and they want you to return a result set and you're like, well, I'll just make it on my own and I'll use a common table expression. And they're like, no, 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 no. And this happens more often than not. They say, we want you to use the existing stored procedure and then, you know, select a set from, select a subset of data from the result set. So for instance, we could also um, do where, you know, the value is greater than 800, which in this case, all of them are. Um, but if one of them wasn't, it would select a subset of that data, of those data, I mean. So it depends on the environment. It depends on the company that you're at. Some companies will allow you to make your own things because, again, I don't necessarily think this is the most effective way of, of returning data. You could just write up the common table expression and then filter it uh, there. But in the instance that you're not able to do that, this actually will allow you to select a subset of those data. As a note, too, and I'm going to replace the video about how to pass one value from a stored procedure to another, on just a quick note on that, let's suppose we're going to go back to what we did here and we're going to do uh, int and we're going to do where id equals. Suppose we wanted to pass a value, this also would work in that situation as well. Okay, this time we're going to add one, I'm going to do value. And again, there are, you could find faster ways to do it, but this, this basically method will work with anything. And we're going to do decimal 13, 2. And then we're going to select i equal to value from c. And then we're going to select i. And of course, the telesense can be our best friend sometimes. And you'll see it will actually select that value. And then we can take this value and pass it into another short procedure. So if we were executing, and this doesn't exist, a second, um, then we would pass that value i into uh, the second. So, and again, this is, you know, from my perspective, the long way to do things, but it works with anything. If there are multiple uh, values, um, then you can go ahead and do that. The other thing as well is if you're going to loop through multiple values, let's say for the next um, process, you could always add the id field here, do int, and then identity 1, 1, then you could say insert into uh, C and you're going to do value select star from C and you'll note that of course it will produce the, the, the number and then of course the value and if there were multiple values then you'd have one two three four five and on and on and on and then you could use that 
to loop through multiple data sets. So that's an example of how to, to return data or to get the values uh, from a stored procedure or the value from a stored procedure. And again, you'll note that that works with everything. You will want to make sure though that your table definition matches whatever you're inserting it into. So if you put, like for instance, if I were to put an int on this table, it would break here because it's a decimal.